So in the last video, we have discussed basic functionalities of uh, SQL Server and our biggest focus was essentially on the Microsoft SQL Server. So if you missed that video, I'm going to put the link inside the description so you can check it out uh, before installing the SQL Server because this might not be really the tool that you need for your tasks. I have already opened uh, three uh, three links, three uh, tabs from the Chrome, our own. Uh, and uh, as you can see in the first one, I have uh, a window for the SQL server. So what we're going to do in this video, we're going to install the SQL server, uh, but we're also going to install a SQL server management studio. So this is a tool to essentially connect to our SQL server and we can create our databases and everything using this tool. And we will also just quickly run through the addi uh, different editions of the SQL server, um, the Microsoft based SQL server, in this case, 2019 version. Um, so if we just go quickly on a SQL Server downloads, you will see that uh, we can download a free specialized edition, uh, which is exactly what we're going to do. So we can choose between developer version and we can choose between express version. Now developer version makes sense if you want to test something locally, if you want to build something really, really strong and then deploy it afterwards to some other uh, higher tier like enterprise versions or something like this. However, what we want to do is we just want to use the express version because the express, express version can also be used on the production. This is, I guess, quite important for everyone who is building this. So one of the, one of the issues that uh, we have in, in any development is cost and uh, obviously SQL costs a lot. And uh, yeah, saving some money there is, is quite important. But obviously for you, before just going ahead and clicking download now for the express editions it is important also to understand what are the features of uh, the express edition in compare uh, to other uh, versions so for instance if you see here we have enterprise standard web developer and express edition so express edition is actually the last one an entry level as said here and uh, it's missing some of the features um, however, I believe that uh, Express version is completely fine to uh, get the, the basic understanding of the SQL functionalities um, and, uh, you know, you will learn some basic CRUD operations, how to design the, uh, the database, etc. So even, even the, the features of the Express versions are not so um, yeah, limited, I would say, because you still you're still able to run with a four cores, which is pretty pretty decent. Uh, you can use almost 1.4 gigabytes of, of uh, memory, which is again uh, quite nice. Or actually, 1.4. I uh, have to calculate. Um, you have a uh, certain cache, 352, it doesn't matter for us at the moment. What, what probably matters the most is, is the maximum size of the database. And this is a 10 gigabytes of data. Now, if you're designing your database well, uh, so meaning you're not saving any binary data inside it like images or videos or anything like this, 10 gigabytes of data is quite significant amount of data. Um, and you can store really really um yeah really really a lot of of information in this in these databases and you can really support your your application quite heavily um with the express version especially if you're kind of adding additional layers like caching layers uh on your application now um you can obviously check all the all the possibilities and all the features from from the different versions. You know, you can see the link here. I don't know is this link going to be alive, but obviously it's it's not uh, a science to just Google. Um, I don't know compare uh, Microsoft SQL uh, versions or or uh, instances or whatever editions. Um, so let's just start installing our thing so i guess this is this is going to be quite quite a good thing for a start so i'm just going to go to the first tab and as said i'm going to download the express version and i'm just going to download the version right there and it's already uh, downloaded so 
I'm going to click and uh, try to install it. Now I get this beautiful screen saying, do I want to allow? Yes. And, um, you know, we're selecting installation media. And now what I want to do is I just want to download the media. So uh, I want to download the complete media. And uh, yeah, I just need uh, the SQL Server engine. That's it. Nothing, nothing else. Um, and uh, it will download it in a specific location. I'm just going to click a download button and uh, uh, luckily my internet connection is um, quite okay. So we will have this file in no time. Just give it a second. Great. So the download is now successful and what I'm going to do, I'm just going to open the folder and uh, this folder, you know, I, I, I see uh, a file well, I have a lot of files actually, so let me just uh, do this. So this is the file that I want to start and I already did this. So essentially it's going to unzip uh, a lot of data and it will un unzip the data uh, inside a certain folder, but automatic um, installation uh, starts. So what we want to do is we want to install a new standalone SQL server. So I'm just going to click on this one and I can actually close this window here and um, so that everything is quite clear. I'm going to accept the license terms. Let's say that I have read them. Um, I don't want to use the Microsoft updates for the uh, to to yeah to dump be downloaded and installed. So I don't really mind it. At least not on my local system. And let's just um, see what will be the next step. Okay, so uh, this is uh, this this part here is essentially uh, this the SQL Server is is checking all the rules that you have. So essentially, like the minimum hardware, some domain controllers, etc. One of the things that you may see here that is yellow is a Windows firewall. So why is this yellow? So it will just tell us, you know, make sure that, you know, that you have the, the port open so that you can access your SQL Server remotely. So why is this important? So usually SQL Server is being, it, it, it's, it's machine for itself, right? You have the, the SQL Server there and then people from, from a different machines, their own local machines are connecting to that system. Um, and, uh, Obviously, if you want to connect to the system, you need to uh, have a port open so that you can uh, you can be connected here. So that that's essentially it. But we're going to use this uh, locally, so we don't really care. Um, if in the case that it is important for you, uh, I believe the port is one four three three. So SQL port, yeah, one four three three. I believe this is this is the default one. Okay, so let me just click next and now we have a feature selection so uh, we have already downloaded uh, the, the smallest package so for us it is completely fine to have database engine I don't really care about SQL server replication here so I'm not going to install it um, root directory seems to be fine so let's just go to the next step which is a feature uh, no instance configuration great so in this step if you don't have any SQL server, this, this grid here is going to be empty and you will be able to choose a default uh, instance. Um, however, in our case, I already have an SQL server. So in my case, not our case, right? Uh, I already have an SQL server installed and this is my default instance. And what does it mean default instance? So let's say that your machine is certain, um, you know, it's on a certain IP, obviously, IP address, and then if you just write this IP address and click connect on, on, on the port 1433, it will connect to the, to the instance that is a default one. If not, you have to specify exactly the instance that you want to connect to. So I'm going to just name this one SQL Express. So it's just like, a, you know, on IIS, if you have a specific um, websites, right? You have a default one, you may have uh, the different one. So it's, it's, um, it's quite straightforward. So let's just go ahead and click next. And now we will go to the server configuration. This sounds a bit spooky, but it's not really. So in this case, uh, it, it just asks you, you know, which 
account are going to run which service and how the service is going to start. For me, this is completely fine. Also collation, for me, it's completely fine. If you don't know what is collation, um, this is essentially the way how the database engine in this case is going to uh, process your, let's say queries, right? So this one, CI says, uh, says that it's, it's case um, insensitive and that it's a sense uh, sensitive. So essentially, um, you know, it, it, it tells you how the, the data is going to be um, yeah, queried essentially in the, in the SQL server. So if it is case insensitive, this means that even if you put like a lowercase, it will also consider uppercase characters in your uh, search clause. So this is this is I guess quite quite good for me and it it's it, it's really the the one that I'm always using. So let's just go to the next step, which is the server configure. Uh, I think we already did the server server configuration. Okay, let's just give it a second. It's kind of froze. Okay, great. So now um, it asks us uh, to do a database engine configuration and we should specify the authentication mode. Now, the SQL server enables two ways of authenticating. One is using Windows authentication mode and the another one is using mixed modes, meaning you can use SQL server authentication and Windows authentication. What does this mean? So SQL server authentication means that you're just going to connect with the username and password, while Windows authentication means that you're going to use with your local identity, with really your, your Windows account or your domain account. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to enable the mixed mode. So I'm just going to enable uh, the SQL server authentication and I'm going to specify the password for the SA account, so system administrator. So just make sure that this password is quite strong because um, if it is not, then um, yeah, anyone can just go ahead and do whatever he wants with your, with your SQL server. Um, here we have data directories, you know, where do we store the data, the, the log, the backups, uh, temporary database, uh, etc. So you can just put everything as is, you don't, don't change it, the memory is already put to this maximum that was mentioned, uh, I believe, here. So this is all completely fine. Just, you know, just leave it as is. Um, let me just click next and the installation process will start. So this might take maybe a minute or two. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pause the video right now and uh, I'm going to continue as soon as the, the process is completed. And as you may see, we have successfully installed the database engine. So we can now just go ahead and click close button. Um, so the setup has been completed and we're really, really happy with it. Now, the next thing that we need to do is we need to install the SQL server management tools. And if I click this, I'm going to be redirected to essentially this link. So it's exactly the same. I have already prepared it. So I'm going to download the SQL server management studio first. I'm going to click here and uh, yeah, unfortunately the size of this file is a bit larger than uh, you might anticipate it, but you know, it's, it's nothing, it's nothing too heavy. Um, and the SQL server management studio, essentially you're going to need it for, for a uh, majority of your work. So it has, it is quite a powerful tool. It has a powerful designers and every, every video that I do regarding the SQL server is going to be using uh, the SQL Server Management Studio or SSMS. So let me just click on it after it has completed its downloading. So I'm just going to click uh, next. The setup is, is way easier than it was for the SQL Server database. So I'm just going to click install and uh, it will take a bit of a time, but uh, yeah, it will be installed. Same as for SQL, I'm going to stop recording now and uh, I'm going to continue as soon as this is completed. And as you may see, we have installed SQL Server Management Studio. So let me just click close and uh, now I'm just going to open it. So a SQL Server Management Studio should be up in uh, no time. So I want to connect with our 
SQL uh, engine. So if I just click on a dot, dot represents a local host. So it, it is the same if you write a dot or if you put something like this, it, it, it's going to connect to the default uh, engine that you're using. So if you remember, well, we had two of them. We had also SQL Express. We use this one. So let me just try to connect to our engine. Hopefully I did type the name right. I think so, but it just takes a lot of time. So local DB and this is no, let me just, okay, it's this one. So let me just connect to this one. Okay, so I have successfully connected to our SQL server um, instance. And uh, okay, the name is, is like the full PC name and then SQL Express. So I guess it should be completely fine if I do something like this. Yeah, it, the, the dot is, is just replacing the local host. If I check the databases, it is empty. Again, databases, it's empty. And you see here that I have connected with, the, with my, my name. And let me just try again with the SQL authentication. So I'm just going to use the SA and I'm going to write my password and it complete, it, uh, it was successful. So we have uh, connected to the SQL Express uh, using the SA or system administrator account. So that is essentially it. So we are now ready to do our uh, first, to build our first database, to build our first tables and uh, yeah, looking forward to it. Thank you very much.